So, we are going to talk about the very tragic passing of Gregory Johnson Jr. Now, if you've never heard of this before, I know there has been a couple content creators to cover this way, like, a long time ago. It was like a year ago, I think, right after the um, Idaho 4 murders. Um, because this is a, a, a parent unaliving that happened at a Sigma Chi fraternity house in San Jose, California, at the San Jose State University out there. Well, his mother does not believe that he harmed himself. She 100% believes he was murdered by his fraternity brothers, um, which they vehemently deny that. They, they claim that he did do this to himself and that they had nothing to do with it. Um, and the police and the medical examiner agree. They think that Gregory did this to himself. Uh, but I want to present the evidence and we'll see what we think about it. Mm -hmm. So going straight into it. He was found on November 22nd, 2008 at the Sigma Chi Fraternity House at San Jose State University, where he lived. He had lived there for two years, um, you know, school years. And apparently some of his fraternity brothers found him in the basement hanging from a water pipe by a very heavy duty extension cord. Um, he was so tall that his knees were essentially like on the ground, which is really interesting. Um, they untied him and set him in an office chair and called the police. The police got there. Um, so yeah, he was six foot two. Yeah, I should mention that his height. He was six foot two, weighed 185 pounds. The distance between the basement floor and the water pipe from which he allegedly was found was five feet, 10 inches. Yeah. So he was, his mom was not notified, by the way, until several hours after he was already gone. Um, students, grief counselors, and university administration were notified of his death before the mother ever received a call. Yeah which is awful. Um, mm -hmm. She should have been like the first notified. But uh, the police get there and, you know, check and he's cold to the touch and he's already gone. Um, well, his mother has claimed to this day that there was a, a cut on the back of his head that was leaking brain matter when she saw him. And she has shown pictures to prove it to the public. Now, what's really interesting um, is that when you look at the autopsy report, it mentions a very like small lesion on the back of his head. And I feel like it's not an honest description. Mm -hmm. It's not honest. Like they mention it one time when they talk about uh like the ligature around his neck and stuff. And that's it. Like that's literally the only time they, they need bring a second it opinion. up. It says a raised nodular skin lesion is noticed at the midline of the lower. Uh, occipital scalp I believe that's how you say that word and upper neck measuring approximately one to one and a half inches in diameter mm. he's claiming there's just like a bump on his head yeah that's essentially all that the autopsy report mentions another strange thing is that it claims that liver mortis is on the posterior side of his body so his back. His back. That's not where liver mortis should be when a body is hanging. And he's cold to the touch by the time the police get there. 
the liver mortis should be in his legs. Yeah. And in his lower upper body too. Like, you know, like hands, feet, you know, all those areas. It should not be on his back. Yeah. I could see it being on the butt maybe some because if he was like, like they're saying his knees were on the ground, mm -hmm. like shins and butt area maybe, but it should all be down there. Yeah. It shouldn't. They just say the posterior side. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. That's strange. Why would they say posterior? Why wouldn't they say lower extremities? Makes me wonder, man. Uh, by the way, another thing that the mother mentioned is that uh, they had a brand new mattress for him. That she went to his room and they had changed the mattress. What? Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. It is. Uh, it's super weird. Um, you know, I, I did see the mom. She went on some channel at some point, and it was a long time ago. And I want to put this out there. If, if you still, Denise, want to put the story out there and get attention on it, I'm totally willing to talk to you and do an interview um, and keep it visible. You know what I mean? Because it's really hard to find interviews with her. Um, and I think this story is a really big deal because I do think there's some kind of injustice here. Like, I do feel like it wasn't investigated the way it should have been. Mm. This young man had nothing but bright things ahead of him. He showed no signs of doing this, which... It is said that people who usually do it don't show signs, but he's literally 20 years old. Yeah. Like he's just in college. Like he's like, this is like a, a bright time in somebody's life. He wasn't showing signs of depression or having tr problems or troubles. Like he was literally doing the exact opposite. Now there is talk in this police report that he supposedly met with his ex-girlfriend earlier that day and talked about some issues he had with his father. Um, his father apparently was an addict and, um, you know, didn't support the family monetarily the way he should have, um, blew the money on, you know, dope and things. And, uh, Gregory Johnson was having issues making his payments, his loan payments for college. Mm. So that was a stressor point in his life, but that is the only one I can find okay. is money. That's it. So I think that's important to mention when we're being objective, of course, because money can be a big deal, mm -hmm. but I don't know if it's enough for a man his age to do this. I don't know. I don't um, know either, but the, I mean, sticking to objective evidence without like trying to connect whether somebody of that age could do something like that that bump is strange the that bump mattress is strange. is strange paired with the, the uh, way he liver was mortis um yeah and how they took him down and put him in an office chair mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there was no forensic evidence under his fingernails or anything which is also a kind of interesting like what even if you're doing it to yourself wouldn't you people still claw at it usually mm. Not, not always. What that, about, I mean, nothing. Okay. Mm -mm. Maybe not. Maybe no, not. Cause once you pass out, you just have to get to the point of passing out. Then True. You don't feel anything. You're gone. Yeah. Good point. Um, but anyway, she, so Denise was notified by Clear Lake, California police officers that showed up to her house. She reported that she felt intimidated because one of the officers had a hand on his gun and kept asking if the family was going to drive down to San Jose that night. Fearing for their safety, Denise and Gregory uh, Sr. did not leave their home until the next morning. Gregory's body had no markings on his neck to suggest strangulation, which is odd considering the police reports stated that he had been hanging for nearly two hours until his body was discovered. That is not what the autopsy report claims. 
So what I think could be going on with that, because we do have pictures, um, because she did put them out there, is it, I, I do see something that could be a mark. However, it's kind of hard to tell because he's laying back. It kind of looks like bruising. It doesn't look very intense. It doesn't look like somebody did it to him necessarily. Now, I could see a possibility that it was done after death. And you think the medical examiner could see that and tell that they would be able to. So I really think they should have got a second opinion. Mm -hmm. They really, really, really needed a second opinion. Like that would be my immediate go to if I had any questions at all in what was going on. That picture is not easy to tell. Yeah. No, I um, I agree. And and look, we we've, we've covered these stories a lot and you know, our our worry, our concern with the Greek system, the fact that one in 3 women get assaulted uh in in Greek life, the fact that one out of every two men leave an addict uh and or an alcoholic from the Greek life, uh a lot of things come with those two things. So, uh, you know, Sigma Chi at this time uh, was only allowed one more mess up nationally from any chapter, period. And they were going to be asked to close all their doors. Uh, so ooh, there's a lot of what if stacking against this situation where, you know, there's a lot of reason to cover this up. Yep. So well, we've asked the question. Are these just young, dumb, drunk college kids? Hmm? Right. You know? Right. So one, okay, here's some more interesting information. So Denise leaves her home the next day, okay? And she goes to the Sigma Chi fraternity house. And when she gets there around 1.30 p.m., November 23rd, somebody had already disinfected the crime scene, the basement, because it smelled strongly of pine saw. The grandmaster of the fraternity was also already at the house when the Johnson family arrived. The house was filled with fraternity boys who Denise Johnson believed were looking for a fight. Denise remembers seeing a police riot squad van parked at the house when they arrived. Which is weird. Very. One of Gregory's fraternity brothers lied to the evidence collector and tampered with Gregory's belongings. Members of the fraternity told the evidence collector cell phone at the site did not belong to Gregory, so it was left behind. Gregory's sister-in-law recognized the phone, and the frat members acknowledged that the phone belonged to Gregory before handing it over to the family. So they were trying not to give it to them? They were trying not to give Gregory's phone over to the cops. When, when Gregory's sister-in-law went through the phone later that night, she found that all Gregory's pictures had been deleted and somebody had attempted to call his voicemail at 8.30 p.m. November 22nd. You guys, isn't it, isn't it kind of weird? 11.22? He was killed on 11.22. What the heck? <laughs> like, I swear the universe is just messing with me at this point. All of us. I swear to God. They they should have got somebody who knows how to pull all that information out. Like, look, yes. So the you, family should go do that on their own if the cops aren't going to do you, it. You realize you can get deleted messages back too. And pictures. Yeah. So uh, they, af okay, several hours after he was allegedly found dead is when they were trying to call the voicemail. Um, the Santa Clara County Coroner's Office refused to let the Johnson family view or ID his body. They say the fraternity brother who found Gregory had already ID'd his body. How is that possible? This is his family. Literally his immediate fam family. Like his mother and father. That makes no sense. They, uh, The coroner's office told Ms. Johnson that she needed to raise a few thousand dollars ASAP to have Gregory's body sent to Clear Lake, California, or else they would just cremate him. Yeah, how nice. Like, very respectful of you. <laughs> when his body finally arrived at the funeral home two weeks later, Denise Johnson discovered a six-inch crack in the back of his head from which brain matter was still oozing. This injury was not mentioned in the incomplete autopsy report that the Johnsons received. Gregory's neck was also broken. 
The FBI reviewed the case, considered it a possible hate crime. The 300-page report the FBI gen- generated was escalated to Washington, D.C. D- After filing multiple requests under the FOIA um, Act, Denise Johnson only received copies of the first few pages of the report due to the matters of national security. And the FBI, by the way, did say they didn't believe this was a hate crime. They came back with that report and said they didn't believe it was a hate crime, which it could have not been and right. still been it murder. It could have not been a hate crime. It could have not still been. been murder. Yeah. Yeah. And they didn't have all the evidence. I don't know if I would have brought up the whole hate crime issue. I would have stayed focused on the just murder, the murder issue. Yeah. There's uh, got to be other motivations here, too. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I totally agree. Um, So. At SJSUPD, which is San Jose State Pol- San Jose State University Police Department officer Fritz Van Der Hoek was one of the first officers to respond to the call about his Gregory's alleged unaliving. Um, he was also at the scene when Antonio Guzman Lopez was shot in the back, and that's where they're kind of making these connections between the police having being racist and the fraternity being racist because Got Sigma it. Chi has been accused of being racist and has done things that have made people think they are that. Um, and that's kind of the direction that they went with this case. Um, the Johnson family filed a lawsuit pro per and, February 2015, hoping the courts would force the police department and the coroner's office to release all the documents from the investigation to the family. This lawsuit was thrown out due to a statute of limitations. Mm-hmm. Um, the Johnson family believes that SJSU, the university, covered up Gregory's death because his fraternity included boys from wealthy and influential families. Gregory was close friends with a fraternity member whose father was in a leadership position at the company Monster Energy Drinks. According to Mrs. Johnson, Gregory's friend deleted all pictures of him and Gregory after Gregory's death. Does that not sound familiar, you guys? They had recently gone on a vacation with a group of friends. All the pictures from the vacation were deleted. An independent autopsy can help prove that Gregory did not die by strangulation from his own doing. Um... Denise Johnson is calling on California and federal authorities to reopen this investigation, release the full FBI report with no info withheld, release the full police records, and reveal the details of this murder that has been kept from her since 2008. And there is a petition. Um, it is, I mean, you can still sign the petition. They have 240. 4,000 signatures. The next goal is 300,000. It started in 2020. Um, and there's details of the case on there. I I think it should be reopened. And I think a second autopsy needs done. I wish it was done right away. Oh, I wish it was done. You know, yeah. there were some marches and protests to try to get to the bottom of this. Some picketing. Nothing worked. Mm. Nothing worked. And there, you guys, there's this website and it has the documents about the case, but it's using these documents, which I agree are incomplete. If there's a six inch crack on the back of this man's head, it says nothing about that in this autopsy report. Doesn't and, it sound oddly like, uh, what's his name? Um, that was found at the Creek. Fell in the back Hudson of his Lindo? head. Hudson Lindau. Hudson Lindau. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It does. It, it sounds oddly like it. If he had I'm a being crack honest. on the back of his head, but he was laying down to make it look like he crawled under the bridge. And then the only, and by the oh. way, the only substances Gregory Johnson had in the system was 0.07% alcohol. I mean, that's kind of a lot. It's right under the legal driving limit, though. Right? Like, isn't that right under? It's 0.08 is when you can't drive. So 0.07, you could technically drive, I think, right? Or am I wrong? How old was he? He was 20, right? Yeah, 20. I think that's what I said. I thought so. It is legal to drive if your BAC is 0.08 or more. But not if you're under 21, obviously. Yep, 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 yep. (laughs) 
So, but he wasn't driving. So, um, I just, I have major questions here. Some of that sounded uh, like too familiar. Yeah. Too reminiscent. Okay. And it, it sounds like everybody, it sounds like that whole fraternity was working together to keep things hidden, like deleting all the pictures. Now there have been no reports of him ever having issues with anybody in the fraternity. Like we, we don't have any information on that. And the only way we would get that information is if he told somebody outside of the fraternity or the fraternity members fessed up, which none of them have done. Like all of them have denied this. Um, but to delete pictures with him, like if he was my friend, okay, and I know I had nothing to do with it, I would be super open to talking with his family. Yeah. Super open to talking with them. Agree. And I would not delete his pictures. He's still my friend. I still love him, even if his family thinks I murdered him. I know I didn't, and I care about him. Like, why? That makes you look so bad. Mm-hmm. It doesn't sound like the fraternity was ever open to talking with the family. And it, that's strange. It's really strange because, you know, we brought up the fact that uh, fraternities and specifically this fraternity um, has rules against talking to law enforcement. Like they just don't. Period. And Sigma Chi At specifically all, is a social fraternity. Like, that's so I didn't realize this, but there are different kinds of fraternities. Some are academic, some are social, mm -hmm. some are like for certain types of people. You know what I mean? Like if you want to excel academically, you join an academic fraternity. Yep. If you want somewhere where you can just hang out with people, you join a social one. Yeah. Like I think there's sport ones too. Mm -hmm. Um. You know now they have multicultural ones that are based around like your culture. Yeah. There's there's all different ones. Uh. Now. But you know. I don't. I don't know how many benefits there really are. To having fraternities be this important in colleges anymore. I understand the benefits for a person that they're going to get paid more. The stats show that you're going to get paid more when you're in a fraternity and graduate college, mm -hmm. um, which is good for the college because people in fraternities that become alumni pay the college more after they get out of school than regular students. Yeah. But you know, their GPA like significantly goes down for fraternity members. Yeah. I do know that. <laughs> and they'll bring people into the fraternity just because they're grade point average. Yeah, because... The you have to have a minimum to have a fraternity in a college. I yep. didn't even know that. I didn't know that overall fraternity members' GPAs go down. Yeah, of course. Like, what Their the Their partying heck? goes up. Yes, their partying goes up, the rate of injury, the rate of essay, and their GPO go, goes down. But then their pay after college goes up right. and how much they donate to the university goes up. And essentially, so we, we did and the, the UK does not allow frats in schools. Only U.S. does. Yeah. Well, you know how we did the 4chan circa 18 something? Yep. And we talked about the death of 26. William Morgan. Yep. Well, all those anti-fraternity role um, laws were passed, okay, where they were super anti-fraternity for a while and they were taken out of all universities. Like, they weren't allowed in universities. But then those fraternity people who were in fraternities when they were young got older and were in leadership roles in universities. And there was a lot of issues in universities mm. at that time. The enrollment was skyrocketing. It, like universities had never been attended that much. And I mm -hmm. have a graph here to show you how much it skyrocketed over those years. It was a lot. Yeah, I think and, it was from 1880 to 1930. And it went up like literally 10,000% oh. or some crazy oh, amount. Okay. Like I don't, an insane amount. You're better with numbers than me. But yeah, it was an insane amount. And they were having trouble controlling the population of students yeah. because they were being wild mm -hmm. um, and getting hurt. And it was hard to discipline them. And fraternities not only offered this structure 
of of like accountability, but they also gave them housing and paid the school so much money. You know what I yep. mean? Yep. Like they got money from it. They got to be able to yell at the fraternity it's chapters. A, it's it's a the corporate frater- chain of cus- or command of where discipline. You, have, you know, the president up here, then you have the uh, fraternity leaders, not fraternity leaders, the alumni fraternity leader people down sure, here. Yeah. And then you have the fraternity leaders, which, you know, and then you have students and the president leans on the fraternities to lead the students and like, dude, and they but influence then the, the rest of the school. But too. then the fraternities do the most crime and are the most trouble. But then the, the president goes to them to create things like, uh, like safety groups and things like that, I but they're the trouble. They are the ones who cause all the trouble. Absolutely. It's so ridiculous and confusing. Like, I don't understand this system. It, it makes no sense. Like we need a better system. Okay. Mm. Because fraternities aren't cutting it. They, them being able to have these rules of secrecy and being able to get away with things because without them, your university couldn't get by. Like it's ridiculous. I, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. I wish we could come up with something better. Unfortunately, we probably never will. Uh, rich people love their uh, secret societies, but I mean, I I was blown away realizing how much fraternities matter to a school that they could a school might literally cover up a murder. Mm. I yeah. kind of like that's what happened here. If you didn't notice, that police officer that responded to the scene was a university police officer that was involved in all of this. Yeah. He didn't get Gregory's phone. You know who took the shot to Kopaka? A university officer. It's interesting. It is. Yeah, it is interesting. It's interesting. Yep. So I'm just saying, um, you know, I I want this case relooked into. I think it's important um, for the public not to question things like this anymore. Clearly enough people in that area of the country in San Jose and surrounding areas felt like something was up with this. His own family feels like something was up with this. Um, there's I mean, 200,000 people agree. They signed the petition, you know? I I think it should be looked into, and I think there should be full disclosure of all of the documents. Um, But I also think for the FBI to make a full decision on whether it was a hate crime or not, they kind of need all the evidence, wouldn't you think? And it doesn't sound like they did. Um, They didn't even have his phone. They sure did. They didn't even have, like, an accurate autopsy, it sounds like. I know. Um. the the liver mortis doesn't make sense. The crack in the head, that's not even really listed. It just says he has a bump on the head. Like, it's weird. It doesn't make sense. It's very strange. Sounds like he had head trauma and his neck broken. And I'm sorry, your neck can't break from being that tall, standing from that height and just bending Dropping. your knees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it, that's not know, possible. And. I think the reason why we automatically go into the potential of Sigma Chi being to blame here, because look, if he accidentally died in some other way, accidentally, um, there would be no reason to cover it up. So like if there was a staging, then it's because someone else was involved. Yep. Hello. And it's, there's too many weird circumstances here. Um, and I don't know, I have major questions, but I want to know what you guys think about the case. Um, this website that is called, oh, I wanted to mention that that has the autopsy report and a bunch of the documents is, um, it's called peace for Gregory Johnson Jr. And you guys, this website's really weird because it has facts and it has an about section. And uh, the about section essentially says that he unalived himself and who he is. And then the facts are supposed to myth bust. Like it's supposed to dispel any rumor that there was a murder. Okay. And that this was him hurting himself. Um, That's the intention of this website. Mm. And they have the documents and are citing the medical examiner's report 
but not mentioning I- any of those other things that the parents found the fact that the phone wasn't given over to police. Like they're, uh, they're saying all of that's not true. So, and it's not from any credible source really, other than they're citing documents. And it says it's signed friends of Gregory Johnson Jr. So tell me who made this website? Yeah. Who had, who felt it was necessary to make this website? Right. Weird. It It's super strange. It's super, super, super strange. Um, it, there's also claims apparently of him getting in a fight that I've only see come from this website. So, I mean, if you want to check it out, you know, I can link it or something if you want to read through it. But it makes me wonder who who benefits from this website yeah. trying to myth bust it all. Yeah. And using the police documents that I think seem flawed because they don't make sense. Yeah. Who do you think? But let me know what you think. <laughs>